How's it going, everyone, and welcome back to Rangers Rundown. The slump is over. The four-game losing streak has been broken. The Rangers defeat the Dallas Stars 6-3 in Dallas, which should bode well for them going into Arizona tomorrow night, hopefully putting together two wins in a row on this mini um, road trip that they are currently on. No notes for this game, so right into the lineup. Kreiner, Zabanajad, Kako, Panarin, Trocek, Lafreniere, VC, Goudreau, Kravtsov, Blay, Carpenter, Gauthier. So Ryan Reeves, the healthy scratch of the forwards. Lindgren, Fox, Miller, Truba, Jones, Schneider, Hayek being the healthy scratch of the decor. Hopefully that lasts. Shesterkin in the net. We get into the first period. 109. Uh, 69 seconds into the game, Marchment scores the opening goal. When you lose four games in a row, you tend to have a defeatist mentality, especially on an early goal. Any goal against hurts, unless you're ahead by six goals. But at early goals, they just sting a little bit more because what little air you have in your balloon hoping for a win just gets deflated right out of the gate. But we're here, they won, everything is right with the world. Rangers just stuck in the offensive zone for the first couple minutes of this game. They finally find the offensive zone about three minutes in. The first line almost scores. That leads to some momentum for the second line. Gauthier makes a strong move to the net, but, say it with me, he doesn't score. First line has another strong shift about six and a half minutes in. Great game for the first line all around. It seemed like every shift they had, just Dallas couldn't find an answer for them. Just every shift, just in the offensive zone, cycling the puck, getting shots on net. 841, Kreider would tie the game with a goal from Kako and Schneider. Uh, third shift in a row with the first line just dominating on the ice. Schneider had a point shot, bounced off the boards. It got to Kako. He's able to shuffle it across the bottom of the slot. Kreider just has to push it in. 10.35, Nils Lundqvist, remember him, traded back in September. He takes an interference penalty. Some offensive zone time for the Rangers on that power play, uh, but they wouldn't score. Schneider with a chance in front right after that power play ends. 17.29, Carpenter takes a hooking penalty, but that Dallas power play would be cut short. 17.51, Robertson takes a tripping penalty. So we get a minute and 33 seconds of four on four with 21 seconds of power play time for the Rangers. 1942. So 18 seconds left in the period. Delandria comes skating right through the blue paint and slew foots Shesterkin. He falls to the ground, hurts his arm or his elbow or something. That's what he was nursing. He would play the rest of the game and he looked fine. Um, but Delandria, Delandria obviously going to pay a price for slew footing a goalie. And he paid the price pretty much the entire rest of the game. He takes a tripping and a roughing penalty. Panarin takes an offsetting roughing penalty because he was treating Delandria pretty bad, rightfully so. So eight seconds of five on three for the Rangers and then five on four to finish the period. Wouldn't score on that power play uh, at the end of the period. Um, shots 10 to seven in favor of Dallas. Rangers controlled the flow way more. I would say Dallas first five-ish minutes of the game was kind of in charge of the flow, but I would say from five minutes to the end of the period, it was either even or the Rangers had the flow. Rangers start the second period with a minute and 42 seconds of power play time. This is like the fourth period in the last, what, three games where the Rangers have started a period on the power play. This time it would connect, though, 58 seconds into the period. Trocek with a power play goal from Zibanejad and Fox. A couple Rangers tonight with three-point games, Zibanejad being one of them. Uh, but it would take 31 seconds for Rope Hens to tie the game up again at 2. Uh, 129, he scores a goal. Rangers can't clear. It's a rebound goal. Nothing Shesterkin could really do about that. 140, so 11 seconds after the Hintz goal, Hanley takes his first penalty of the game, an interference call. Dallas, Dallas has a shorthanded chance, um, and Lafreniere has a chance uh, right at the end of that power play. First line pushes again for a strong shift early in the second period. 623, Trocek takes a cross-checking penalty. Ben takes an offsetting roughing penalty, so we get two minutes of four-on-four four time. Wedgwood is in for Ottinger. 
uh, after those penalties are called. Ottinger with some sort of lower body something. He was on the bench for the rest of the game, so if Wedgwood ended up having to come out, Ottinger would have gone back in. Not quite sure what happened to Ottinger, but he was out Wedgwood in for the rest of the game. Kreider has a chance in front all alone during that four-on-four. Four, but nothing would go in the net for either team. First line with another great shift halfway through the period. Lafreniere in the slot right after that. Um, right after that. Sorry, five, uh, seven and a half left. Kraftsob ridden pretty hard into the boards. He goes to the locker room, would be out the rest of the game with an upper body injury. So this poor kid, we are, what are we, nine games into the season, and this is his third injury already. Like, this poor kid is just trying to show us what he's made of, and he's constantly out of the lineup. Who knows if he'll play tomorrow? I mean, he'll obviously finish off the road trip with the team if he's injured. Maybe he plays tomorrow, maybe not, but he's just having a rough start to the season, this kid. 13-14, Hanley takes his second penalty of the period, a tripping call, and it would take a minute and four seconds for Zibanejad to score a power play goal. Beautiful pass from Panarin, a redirect in front. Rangers go up 3-2 to two late in the second period. 14-22, Miller takes an interference penalty, but a good kill by the Rangers. VC with a great chance right after the penalty kill ends. 1846 Robertson ties it up 3 to 3. Rangers win the faceoff, but they quickly lose the puck to the Stars. Robertson puts it 5 hole on Chesterkin. Shots 15 to 13 in favor of Dallas in that second period. We get to the third period. 351 into that period, Robertson would score another goal, but the Rangers challenge for offsides and they do win that challenge. I think that was a nice wake-up call for the Rangers. You need to avoid turnovers because both of Robertson's goals, the second one would have been a goal, were on Rangers turnovers that he just took, put it five hole on Chesterkin. And I think the message got through, honestly, because the rest of this third period, the Rangers played really well. Second line has a huge shift and they almost score, but pretty early in this third period, Gallant shuffles up some of the D pairs. Um, so I think Miller was with Jones and Trubo was with Schneider, or it could have been the other. I think Trubo was with Jones. Miller was with Schneider. I think that's how it went uh, because Miller and Trubo were the D pair on the ice for all three goals against for the Rangers. So Trubo and Miller not playing extremely well defensively this afternoon. Not quite sure what happened there, but the rest of the period went really well. 11-18, the first NHL goal of Jones's career from Trocek and Gauthier. Gauthier makes a great keep in at the blue line to keep the play going. Jones with a shot from the high slot. He gets it in the net. So congratulations to him. It would only take 20 seconds for Gauthier to say, hey, I want to score a goal too. 20 seconds later, very, very good goal from Gauthier, from Blay, and Jones. He pushes the puck into the zones. He's being hounded by two Dallas Stars. Pushes the puck into the zone. He gets through the Stars players. Wedgwood is coming out to play it. He's able to scoot it around Wedgwood's stick and get it from a pretty sharp angle into the now completely empty net. It was a beautiful goal from Gauthier. So in 20 seconds, the Rangers start to run away with this game. Jones now has a goal and an assist in the game after the Gauthier goal. Is that enough to keep Hayek out of the lineup for a good swath of time? I really hope so. Kreider with a great hit on Delandria, probably payback for what he did at the end of that first period. 13-26, Trocek would score a goal. So three goals for the Rangers in just over two minutes. Uh, that goal was from Zibanejad and Lafreniere. It was during a delayed penalty, so it was a six-on-five goal. Zibanejad, beautiful touch pass from the slot to get it to Trocek, buries it in the back of the net. First line, still pushing after that sixth goal. They don't care. Rack them up. There is no mercy in the NHL. 16:56, Blay takes a cross-checking penalty. Good kill by the Rangers. Lindgren gets pushed into Shesterkin, so the lines come together again. Just under a minute, Goudreau just walks right up to Delandria, knocks him right on his butt, takes the roughing penalty, but he doesn't care. It's payback 
again for slew footing Shesterkin earlier in the game. The Rangers would kill off the 50 seconds of that power play, and they would win the game 6-3, to three, shots 8-6 to six in favor of Dallas in that third period. So... Dallas shoot out shooting the Rangers 33 to 27 in this game, but Rangers scoring six goals on 27 shots. That is really good. Faceoffs above 50%, 53.8. Power play two for five. Power play clicking at 40%. We will take that any day of the week. Hits 18 to 13 in favor of the Rangers. Block 16 to 17 in favor of the Stars. The trivia question of the afternoon: Who is the all-time NHL point leader? among Texas-born players. If I knew the hometowns of NHL players, maybe I would have had a shot of answering this correctly. But apparently, it was Brian Leach. Or it is Brian Leach. 1,028 points in his illustrious career. He is from Corpus Christi, Texas. Where to put the Rangers on the glory graph today? Well, they won. So they're in the top half, top half, and I thought, besides the first five minutes and some defensive errors that led to some Stars goals, I thought they played a pretty solid game, especially the third period. I won't put them all the way over here, because they didn't play a perfect game, but I'll put them, put them right smack in the middle of this yellow section. I think they, they obviously won, they put in a pretty solid effort. Let's hope this momentum carries them through tomorrow night in Arizona and then forward because I think after Arizona tomorrow, they play the next four games at home. So can they string together maybe four or five wins over the next six, seven games? Let's hope they can. It only took one win and now they're in the top three of the league. Now, most of the Metropolitan plays later tonight, so this will look slightly different in just a few short hours, but the Rangers still making their case for being in the top half of this division. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more videos like it, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next rundown.